हाय गाइस हियर अगेन पर्वत प्रदेश में पावर्स टेकन फ्रॉम ग्रेट टेन टेक्स्ट बुक स्पर्श सीबीएसई सिलेबस वन ऑफ माय लिटिल सब्सक्राइबर्स हैड आस्ट मी टू एक्सप्लेन दिस पोम डेडिकेटेड टू हर एंड ऑल द लिटिल चिल्ड्रन हु वुड लाइक टू नो द एक्सप्लेनेशन लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ विद अ पोम दिस पोम पर्वत प्रदेश में पावर्स Now, children, Parvat Pradesh me powers means rainy season in the mountainous region. That is what we are going to read about. It's written by Sumitra Nandan Pant. We are entering the lesson now, Part Pradesh. Bhala kaun hoga jiska man pahadon par jaane ko na machalta ho? The poet says, "Do you think there'll be anyone who will not be inclined to visit mountains?" ना मचलता हो मीन्स हु डज नॉट हैव द स्ट्रॉन्ग इंक्लिनेशन जिन्हें सुदूर हिमालय तक जाने का अवसर नहीं मिलता वे भी अपने आसपास के पर्वत प्रदेश में जाने का अवसर शायद ही हाथ से जाने देते हों दो पीपल हु डू नॉट गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू विजिट हिमालय विच इज फुली स्नो क्लैड एंड इट्स एक्सट्रीमली ब्यूटिफुल इवन सच पीपल दे डू नॉट लूज द ऑपरचुनिटी to visit a hilly region near the place where they stay and the sir means opportunity now children hard say na jaane dena wherever i put a red circle that means it's a muhavara which you may get in your exam hard say na jaane dena means not to lose the opportunity mauka nahi gamana aise mein koi kavi aur uski kavita agar kaksha mein baithe baithe hi wahi wah anubhuti de jaye जैसे वह अभी अभी पर्वतीय अंचल में विचरण करके लौटा हो तो नो दोएट इज इन सच अ केस इफ अ पोएट एंड हिज पोएम गिव्स यू द फीलिंग दैट ही हैज जस्ट रिटर्न आफ्टर वॉन्ड्रिंग अराउंड और आफ्टर विजिटिंग अ हिली एरिया देन सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू रीड अबाउट द पोम अनुभूति मीन्स फीलिंग पर्वतीय अंचल मीन्स माउंटेनस रीजन और हिली एरिया विचरण करके मीन्स वॉन्डरिंग और रोमिंग अराउंड प्रस्तुत कविता ऐसे ही रोमांच और प्रकृति के सौंदर्य को अपनी आंखों निरखने की अनुभूति देती है नाउ दिस पोम पर्वत प्रदेश में पावर्स इट गिव्स यू और इट मेक्स यू एक्सपीरियंस दैट थ्रिल एंड गिव्स यू the you know the feeling that you are watching the beauty of the nature with your own eyes here romanch means thrill and nirakhne ki means check checking with your own eyes and feeling that beauty of the nature yahi nahi sumitra nandan pant ki adhikansh kavitaen padhte hue yahi anubhuti hoti hai ki mano hamare aas paas ki sabhi deewarein kahin vileen ho gayi ho not only that while reading majority of the poems written by sumitra nandan pant we feel as if all the walls nearby us have all disappeared that is limitlessly we are able to enjoy things vileen hona means to disappear hum kisi aise ramya sal par aa pahunche hain jahan pahadon ki apar shrinkhala hai we have reached such a beautiful place where there is boundless mountain ranges aas paas jharne beh rahe hain nearby streams are flowing aur sab kuch bhool kar hum usi mein leen rehna chahte hain and forgetting everything we just want to remain absorbed in the beauty of nature here children apart means boundless shrinkhala means mountain ranges jharne means streams water flowing out of the mountains lean rehna means we would like to be absorbed mahapran nirala ne bhi kaha tha mahapran nirala also had said panth ji mein sabse zabardast kaushal jo hai vah hai shali ki tarah apne vishay ko anek upamaon se sambhal kar madhur se madhur aur komal se komal kar dena now mahapran nirala had said the best skill that sumitra nandan pant ji had was that he, the just like shelly the poet shelly 
he would use decorate his poems with lot of similes and whichever subject he is presenting he makes it very sweet and very soft that is makes it very appealing to the readers here kaushal means skill vishay subject upamaye means similes and samarkar means by decorating it with similes children i'll just explain you the summary of the poem first sar means summary kavi ne is kavita mein prakriti ka aisa varnan kiya hai ki lag raha hai ki prakriti sajeev ho uthi hai now in this poem the poet has described nature in such a way as if it has become alive sajeev means alive kavi kehta hai ki varsha ritu mein prakriti ka roop har pal badal raha hai now the author oh, sorry the poet says that during the rainy season the nature's appearance or form keeps changing every moment kabhi varsha hoti hai तो कभी धूप निकल आती है एट टाइम्स इट रेन्स एंड एट टाइम्स द सन कम्स आउट और द सनशाइन कम्स आउट पर्वतों पर उगे हजारों फूल ऐसे लग रहे हैं जैसे पर्वतों की आंखें हो थाउजेंड्स ऑफ फ्लावर्स व्हिच हैव ब्लूम्ड ऑन द माउंटेन्स दे लुक दे सीम टू बी द आईज ऑफ द माउंटेन्स और वो इन आंखों के सहारे अपने आप को अपने चरणों में फैले दर्पण रूपी तालाब में देख रहे हैं एंड इट लुक्स एज इफ विद दीज आईज द माउंटेन्स दे आर लुकिंग एट और सीइंग देयर ओन इमेज इन द पॉन्ड व्हिच इज स्प्रेड इन देयर इन द फुट ऑफ द माउंटेन हियर चिल्ड्रन नाउ आंखों के सहारे मींस विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ द आईज अपने चरणों में फैले Charno me means at the foot, foot of the mountains. Darpan rupee tala, pond, which is almost like a mirror for the mountain. Parvaton se girte huye jharne kal kal ki madhur aavaz kar rahe hain, jo nas nas ko prasannata se bhar rahe hain. Now the waterfalls which are falling from the mountains, they are making very sweet sound of kal kal. That is kal kal here. it is being said as a sound of the waterfall falling and that gives you know each and every vein of ours becomes happy listening to those sound jharni means streams madhur aawaz means sweet sound or voice nas nas means each and every vein parvaton par uge hue ped shant aakash ko aise dekh rahe hain जैसे वो उसे छूना चाह रहे हो एंड दो ट्रीज विच हैव ग्रोन ऑन द माउंटेन्स दे लुक एज इफ दे आर यू नो दे वॉन्ट टू रीच द पीसफुल स्काई बारिश के बाद मौसम ऐसा हो गया है कि घनी धुंध के कारण लग रहा है मानो पेड़ कहीं उड़ गए हो अर्थात गायब हो गए हो and because of the after the rain barish ke baad means after the rain the climate or the weather has become such that because of the dense fog or the mist it looks as if the trees have blown away somewhere or they have they are not to be seen they have disappeared here the poet wants to say that the mountain is so much covered with dense mist that we can't see almost anything even the trees are not to be seen nothing is to be seen चारों ओर धुआं होने के कारण लग रहा है कि तालाब में आग लग गई है ऐसा लग रहा है कि ऐसे मौसम में इंद्र भी अपना बादल रूपी विमान लेकर इधर उधर जादू का खेल दिखाता हुआ घूम रहा है we feel as if in this weather even lord indra he is on his cloud like plane airplane and he is wandering here and there you know showing magic or we feel as if it's all an illusion 
Children, this is a summary of the poem in English, which is uh, written for your convenience. In case you want to go through it quickly, you can definitely do that. I'm not explaining it here. Parvat Pradesh mein Pavas. It means rainy season in the hilly region or mountain region. Here, Pavas means rainy season. Children, I'll be reading the stanzas in Hindi and then I'll tell you the meanings of the difficult words and then the meaning of the lines in the stanzas. That way, it will be very easy for you to understand the poem well. Pavas Ritu Thi Parvat Pradesh Pal Pal Parivartit Prakriti Vesh. Pavas Ritu here means rainy season. Parvat Pradesh means mountain region or the hilly region. Parivartit means changed. And Prakriti Vesh means appearance of the nature or form of the nature. Now, in this, these two lines of the stanza, the poet has given a beautiful description of the rainy season. The poet says that the rainy season has entered the mountainous region due to which the nature is changing every moment. The form of the nature is changing every moment. Sometimes it's rainy, then sometimes the sun comes out. Meklakar Parvat Apar Apne Sahisri Drik Suman Fard Avalok Raha Hai Bar Bar Niche Jalme Nij Mahakar Meklakar means or the girdle, girdle or chain shaped mountain range, mountain slope, sorry. Apar means boundless or limitless. Sahisri means thousands of them. Drik Suman means flower like eyes. Fard means staring or open. Avlok raha hai means it is seeing. Mahakar means its large form. Now, in this verse, the poet has compared the shape of the mountains with a girdle, that is that ornament which is tied around our waist. The poet says that the girdle-shaped mountains are tearing their thousand flower-shaped eyes and looking at their huge size in the water below. Jiske charno me pala tal, darpan sa fela hai vishat. Children, tal means talak or pond. Darpan sa means mirror-like. Fela hai means which is spread out. Vishal means large. It seems that the pond which the mountain has raised at its feet is acting as a huge mirror for the mountain in which it is seeing its image and it's seeing its large form. I hope I'm clear, children. Any doubt, please feel free to write in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you. Children, this is a written explanation of the same which I'm not going to read out. Okay, you all can read it if you want it. Giri ka gaurav gakar jharjhar, madh mein nas nas uttejit kar, moti ki ladiyo se sundar, jharte hain jhaag bhare nirjhar. I'll tell you the meaning of the, these four lines of the stanza first. Here giri means mountain, gaurav means its pride, jharjhar is being referred to the sound of the water falls falling from the mountain and flowing as a stream. Madh me means in that pride or out of fun. Nas, nas, each and every vein. Uttejit means make it excited. Moti ki ladiya means pearl strings. Jhag, here it refers to the bubbles or the froth that is formed when water falls from a height onto the ground. Here, now the meaning of these four lines I'm going to explain. In this verse, the poet says, that the beautiful springs, like strings of pearls, are flowing with the sound of jharjhar. It looks as if they are praising the mountains. And the sound that they are making, that kalpal sound or the jharjhar sound, it fills the nerves with enthusiasm or happiness. I hope you understood, children. Girivar ke urse utha uthkar uchha kangshau. Here, 
Here Giriva refers to mountain. And Ur means heart. Uchakang Shao, Se means with high ambition. Taruvar means trees. Nirav Nab means peaceful sky. Animesh means continuously staring at something. Atal, stable, without moving. Chintapar means thoughtful. Now the meaning of these four stanzas. Rising from the heart of the mountains, many trees with the desire to rise higher are looking at the calm sky or the peaceful sky with continuous gaze as if they are immersed in some anxiety. That is, they are very thoughtful. In other words, they are constantly inspiring us to rise higher in life. I hope it's clear, children. Ud gaya, achanak lo bhudhar, fadka apar, parat ke par. Ravashesh reh gaye hai nirjhar, hai toot pada, bhu par ambar. Now, in these stanzas, the poet is giving a picturization of how the mountain region looks after the heavy rains. He is giving a beautiful picture and children we are able to imagine it. The words that he had used here, it helps us imagine or see as if we are really witnessing the mountain region after the rain. Here, Bhudhar means mountain. Bhu means the land and Dhar means something that it is carrying. So, the mountain. Fadka means to flutter. Parat ke par means the shining feathers of the bird para. Now, the thick mist that has come over the mountain region after the heavy rains is being referred to as this one. Okay. Rav Shesh means only the sound is remaining, the sound of the stream flowing. Bhu means land. Ambar means the sky. Now the explanation of this stanza. In this verse, the poet says that after the heavy rain, the he weather has become such that due to the thick mist, it seems as if the trees have been blown away somewhere. Here children, Ud Gaya means it has, they have blown away and that they have disappeared. What the poet means to say is that after the heavy rains, there is very thick mist or fog in the mountain area and we cannot see anything. Literally nothing is seen. We feel as if the trees are not there only. And not only that, we can. the only thing that we can feel is the sound of the stream flowing. We feel as if the sky has fallen on the earth. We cannot see anything that is or nothing on the earth that is visible. Dhans gaye dhara mein sab hai shal, uth raha dhua, jal gaya taal. Yon jalat yaan mein vichar vichar, tha indra khelta indra jal. Here, shal refers to the trees known as shal trees, which are, have grown on the mountain area and which are, you know, looking at the sky as if they want to reach the sky. But due to the thick mist, we are not able to see even these tall trees of shal. Ut raha dhua. Children here, dhua means smoke. Jal gaya taal. Taal means pond. Indra khelta. Indra jal means illusion or magic. What the poet here means to say is that the whole, we feel as if the whole sky has come down to the earth. Only the water sound is being heard. And seeing such such a terrible form of nature, the shal trees, they have sunk inside the earth in fear. Actually, what he means to say is that we are totally unable to see the trees because of the thick fog or mist. And sometimes these, uh, the fog or the thick mist, it looks like smoke. And we feel as if it is coming from the pond below which is on fire. So due to the smoke, all around it seems that the pond is on fire. It seems that in such a weather, Lord Indra is also carrying his cloud-like plane 
and roaming here and there showing a lot of magic. We feel it's all an illusion. It is that beautiful. I hope children you understood the poem. Please do let me know in case you have any doubts. It's written by Sumitra Nandan Panth. And in the next slide, I've given you the English explanation also. Fine. Best wishes for your exam. Take care and stay safe.